I'm Jean, your friendly content developer and sometime videographer for the Shasta Historical Society. Today I'm standing at a location along a trail route used during the latter half of the 1800s. Immigrants coming west to the Sacramento Valley or those headed east to Honey Lake near present-day Susanville or into Nevada and beyond would pass by and sometimes stop here. I chose this historical site in part because it can be easily overlooked as we drive by on the highway. This dry lake in front of us is called Summit Lake, probably because it resides at the high point just east of Hat Creek Rim. Although water was often unavailable to travelers, because the lake is historically mostly dry during the summers. This flat ground was still a convenient place to stop, especially those with teams of horses or oxen pulling wagons would want to rest their animals and themselves before making the challenging descent into or after climbing out of Hat Creek Valley. Near this point, travelers gained a panoramic view of Mount Shasta, Lassen Peak, and other mountains. The sight of the snowy heights must have captured the imagination after the earlier days of the Nevada desert and often flat to rolling terrain before now. I'm continuing this video on a sad note. As you can see, the surrounding area here was devastated by the Dixie Fire. And the reason I came here next to Summit Lake was to show you a tree that now no longer exists. It was called the Summit Juniper and it stood between Highway 44 and Summit Lake. As I pan around here will come up on a stump that I think was the Summit Juniper. There was a sign that used to stand in front of it that told of its diameter, height, and age. And I didn't bring that information with me because I thought I would just show you the sign. So I'll include that information in the Facebook posting accompany this video. When immigrants traveled through this area, the tree would have been approximately 350 years old and already considered large. With that in mind, I imagine that except for someone particularly interested in plants and trees, few travelers likely noticed or even stopped to look at it. And while it was a point of interest before it was destroyed, it probably blended with its surroundings despite its size and was just one more tree among countless others encountered during an immigrant's long journey westward to California.